Hey everyone, it is TK Friday. Today I'll be doing an Aspen landscape. You can download the PDF notes and the image, and then after you watch the video, you could try it out for yourself. Sit back, relax, and let's get started. Well, it's that time of the week again. TK Friday is here. I'm so glad you're joining me today on this episode. This is going to be a full edit of some Aspens. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, I started out this edit in Lightroom. I did my basic adjustments here, nothing over the top. I did use a linear profile. This was an Olympus uh, EM1 Mark III camera, you know, and I do my typical lens corrections and I added no sharpness or noise reduction to it because when I sent it into Photoshop, I ran Topaz sharpen AI on it. That removes noise. It's a very low noise image, ISO 800, and it sharpens it up just a little bit, just that initial sharpening, you know, because raw files are never that sharp out of the camera. So you need a little bit of sharpening. When you get your file, it's going to have these Lightroom edits on it. Now I've also done some uh, cropping here. As you can see, this is my crop here. I straightened the image out and just tightened up on the crop. That was just what I thought looked best on this image. So that's what I've done with the crop. And now at this point, we're ready to send this image into Photoshop. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. In case you're wondering how do you download the PDF notes and the image, this is what you need to do. Directly below the video's thumbnail, you're going to find the show more. Click on that. It's going to open up that description. And inside there, you're going to find the Dropbox link for the PDF notes as well as the image. That's very important. I just wanted to clear that up because a lot of times people say, where in the heck are those notes at, Dave, and the image? Well, now you know how to get them. We're here in Photoshop, so now we can get underway. In past videos, I've talked about setting yourself up for success. And what I mean by that is, if you know you're going to be working with certain selections in the image, like a sky and a foreground, it's a good idea to save those out as channels. And if you look down at my channels, you see I have a foreground and a sky selection. They're really easy to save out, and let me show you how to do it. To select the sky, all you need to do is come to the combo or CX panel and click this button right there. Photoshop will use its artificial intelligence to select the sky for you. And then to save it, just click on this button right here. This opens up the save selection and just give it a name like sky, S-K-Y, and click OK. Oh, I've already saved mine out, so I don't need to do that. I'm just going to click cancel, but that's how you save the sky. Now you'll notice the sky is still selected. Now we want to save out the foreground though. There is no foreground selection. So what we'll need to do is we still have the sky selected. You see this button on the combo panel right here. This is to invert selection. So click on the invert selection button, this button right here, and that just inverts the selection. Now notice this distance hill back here. It's a lot different from the upfront aspens and mountains. So I do not want to include that in my foreground selection. So I'm going to remove it. Let me show you how to do that. Just grab your object selection tool and it's right here in the tool well. I'm in the lasso mode and what I'm going to do is hold my option key down and that will subtract it from the selection. So I'm going to let artificial intelligence from Photoshop see what it can do with this area right here. Yeah, and you see it remove that whole area right there. Now I may need to clean this up a little bit so we can go into selected mask and on the TK8 combo or CX panel, you're gonna find a button that says S and M right here. Here it is on the CX panel. So just click on that, that takes you into selected mask. Now you see this little bit of residue right here. If you click on this brush and put it in the minus mode, you can just erase that right off of there just like that, okay? And now I'm gonna change the view to an overlay. And now with this brush here, I'm just gonna refine this edge. I'll make my brush a little bit larger and just come along this edge like this and paint over this edge. And that should do a pretty good job of just selecting that. And then all you need to do is click okay. 
And now you can just come up here and click this button again to save out your selection and call it foreground and click OK. I already have mine saved, so I'm just going to click cancel. And as you'll notice, I have the marching ants here. If you click this button on the combo or CX panel, it's right here. Click this button and that selection goes away. The first thing I want to do is do a balance and contrast adjustment to the foreground. Now to do that, we're going to come up here to my channels. That's this button right here. And we're going to click on foreground. That will select the foreground as you can see there. I'm going to click on my mask calculator. And there's a reason for that. And you'll see in a second, I'm going to click on this X for intersect. X out of here. I'm going to go into luminosity masks. And for this adjustment, I always like to use a mids three. And the only reason I use it is to protect my shadows, my deepest shadows and my highest highlights from getting clipped. And then I'll click the equal button. And now you can see I just have that mids three on the foreground. And now I'm going to output that to a color grading tool. So click on this color grading button right here and that opens up your color grading tool. And what I mean by balance and contrast is, is to balance out the foreground here to get all the tones kind of evened out and to build up a little bit of contrast in those tones. And I find it's a great way of starting every image kind of gets you grounded and kind of lets you see where you need to go next. I'll do the foreground and then I'll do the sky. Sometimes I do them together, but on this one, I think I need to do them separately because I want to darken the sky a little bit, but I want to lighten up the foreground. I'll start with the midtone, so I'll click on this gray block and I'm just going to open up the midtones just a little bit, not much, just lighten them up a little bit and also kind of just give them a little bit of warm color grades somewhere. I think right there looks good. And see this area, I took it out because I did not want that color grading back there because it's kind of like a blue cast and it's in the distance. So I think it looks good just the way it is. I don't want to touch it. If you look at my notes in step 10, you'll see I removed those distant hills from that initial selection. Now, in this video, I'm showing you I did it up front. When I made my original edit, I did not do it and I decided I didn't like the way it was colored back there. So I went ahead and removed it. Just disregard step 10 if you removed it when you made that foreground selection. If you remove that area, you don't have to do step 10. I just want to point that out. And now let's go to shadows. So click on this black block and I'm just going to darken up the shadows to somewhere I think maybe right about here looks pretty good. I don't want to get them too dark so things get blocked up, but I think that's going to be pretty good right there. And now let's click on the highlight block and I'm just going to drag this slider to the right just to open up those highlights a little bit to maybe right there I think is good. Let me shut this layer off. Here's the before. And now here is the after, and I think that looks really nice, and I think we're off to a very good start. Now we're gonna move on to the sky. Let's X out of the color grading tool. Nothing changes here. Now we can see the multi-mask panel. Let's go back to my channels. This time we want our sky. We're gonna use the mask calculator again. We're gonna do another intersection, so click on that X. X out of here, so you can get to the luminosity mask. Click on the luminosity mask button and click on Midtones 3 to keep shadows and highlights from clipping. Click on the equal to make that calculation and now we have that sky selected for us. And now let's output that to a color grading tool. Click on the color grading button. And now we're gonna go to Midtones. I wanna darken up my Midtones first. So let's pull this to the left. You don't see a change until you release your mouse click. So I think somewhere right around there and let's give it a little more blue color grading. So let's drag this maybe somewhere to right around there. See how that adds some really nice blue, kind of blue into cyan's right there. I think that's gonna be good. You can always come back and retweak things later. It's a non-destructive workflow. And now let's click on the highlight block and I'm just gonna reduce the highlights a little bit to maybe somewhere right about there looks good. And I will not color grade the highlights. I think they're fine. The next thing I wanna do is just lighten up the overall midtone. So let's X out of this color grading tool. And this is something I like to do. And this is simple. Just click on the luminosity mask button. Click on midtones one. It's gonna be a very subtle midtone adjustment. It's only targeting the midtones. And we're going to output that to a curves adjustment layer. So click this curves adjustment button right here. And we're just going to change the blend mode from normal. Right now it's on normal. We're going to click on this screen button. And you see how it just lightens up those midtones a little bit. Here's the before and here is the after. I like what it's doing down here to the trees. And if it's too strong, we can take this opacity 
and just pull it back a little bit. And I think I'll do that. Let's see. I think I'll go to 80% right there. Here's the before and here's the after. So it just lightens up the mids a bit. Now, my editing philosophy is to look for problems, look for issues. And when I look at this image, now that I got it this far, I look at these distant aspens here and I think I want those to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to dodge them, but I'll dodge them and lighten them up with some color. This is a little something different. I don't usually do this too often, but if it calls for it, I do. So let me show you what I mean. The first thing I need to do is select these. So I'm going to use the color mask button right here. So click on this and I'm going to select some of the yellow in here, like maybe right here and click OK. And it targets those. Now they're really dark, but if you take this brightness slider and drag it to the right, I'm going to drag it the whole way over to the right to right here. They're pretty good, and I'm going to grab my levels adjustment here. This is the refinement section, all these tools here. I like to use levels to lighten things up or tighten selections up, so I'm going to click this. And all I'm going to do is take this mid-tone slider and drag it to the left just to lighten up those aspens. These little white areas in here are those aspen trees. So we lighten them up a little bit right around there I think is good. Now we're going to output this to a dodge tool. Now the dodge tool has two sides. The one side will give you a blank pixel layer. The other side gives you a gray pixel layer. I like the 50% gray because I can blend with a gray brush in case I overdo something or need to blend things. So I'm going to use the left side, click on that. That brings up our dodge tool. But what I'm going to do, normally I would dodge with white and I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger here. Normally, I would dodge with white paint, and I would use about 20% opacity. So I'm going to type my 2 key. That gives me 20% opacity. What I'm going to do is click on this green brush right here. When you click on this, it opens up your color picker. And I'm going to pick this color right here. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to pick one of these colors down in here, this yellow for this aspen right here. And it's lighter than what we have here. I might even go a little bit lighter by clicking right here. And that's the color I have. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to dodge with that. And so what I'll do is just with that 20% brush, start painting. See that? How I can just paint over some of these aspens. And I have them selected. So I can just really paint pretty loosely here. It doesn't really matter. Now it's putting 20% of the paint down. If I lift the brush and paint again, it'll add more paint. It won't be 20%, but it'll be in increments. And I, I don't like to make them all even because it looks unnatural. But you can just paint away. Lift the brush and apply more in certain areas. Only paint once in some areas. You get the drift, right? And we can paint over all these. And it's only targeting those colors that you see. So I'm lifting my brush and painting over here a few times. I'm going to come over in here. But you get the point, right? You just paint away. I went ahead and sped the video up because I don't want to waste all your time, but take your time and get it right. Now, if you need to blend some areas, if you got things too strong, you could use the gray brush here at a lower opacity and just paint over and blend and reduce things down. That's why I like this gray layer. By the way, it's in the overlay blend mode. Now, let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. And notice my selection indicators. I was painting through a selection, so I was very targeted to only hit those aspen trees. So I didn't have to be very accurate in my painting. It will only hit the yellows. And that, my friends, is what the TK8 plugin for Photoshop is all about. Editing accuracy. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm looking for problems, right? And this upper part of this mountain here is a little low contrast. And I like to darken up some of these darker shadow areas. So we're going to tackle that next. Let's see what kind of tools we have. Now we have luminosity masks. We have zone masks, color masks, hue saturation masks. Man, we have masks for everything here, don't we? I'm going to try the zone mask. So click on this zone mask button right there. And we're going to target these dark tones. So I'm going to click right here and click OK. And you can see these lighter areas are what has got selected. But what I want to do is really tighten up this selection. This will tighten your selection right here. So I'm going to click and drag this to the left. Release it. I'm going to drag it a good, good way over like this. And now we can lighten that selection up or the areas that will be selected by dragging this brightness slider to the right. And I'm going to drag it over a good bit. So we're nice and tight and we're light. I call this tighten and lighten, by the way. And now all we need to do is output this. So I'm going to output it to a burn tool. And just like the dodge tool, it has two sides. 
the right side will give you a blank pixel layer and the left side will give you a 50% gray layer. I'll click on the left side. And now with, I'll try 20% paint. Just It's just black paint. It's a black paint brush. And what we need to do is just start painting here. Now that's 20%. I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to step back two steps. One and two. And I think I'm going to change the opacity to 10%. I'm going to type my one key. I thought that was a little too strong. So there's one. You can one pass. I'm just painting over them one time. Now, if you want it darker, you could paint over it a second time. But you can get all these dark areas. And remember, the zone mask is only targeting the dark areas here. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger and paint over this entire area right in here and right over in here, up in here. Let's paint over this area over here because that's a shadow as well. Make my brush a little bit smaller here and maybe hit some of these areas in here. Even these little tiny little cracks or whatever you want to call these in the mountain. Hey, by the way, if you know where this area is, I'm sure Mike knows who made this image. Uh, but if you know where this area is, let me know because I don't really know where it is. But I think that's going to be pretty good. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. So it just darkens that up a little bit, and I think that's going to really help. Hey, don't forget to leave comments and questions. I really want to hear from you. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the joy of editing with Dave Gully. You know how that YouTube algorithm works. Liking and sharing really helps promote this channel. When you do that, I thank you. Oh, and by the way, if you hold your Alt or Option key down and click on these layer eyeballs, you can see what your burning looks like. Option or I'll click it again, you get the image back. And same with this dodging. Option or I'll click here. You can see all the little yellow areas that I painted on these aspens. Option or I'll click and you'll see it back again. That's another reason I like the 50% gray layer because you can really see what you've done. Now back to image troubleshooting. The top of this mountain's a little low in contrast, so I have an easy fix for that. Right now I have a selection here, so I got to get rid of that selection. So click this button on the combo or this button on the CX panel. That gets rid of your selection and grab a curves adjustment layer. It doesn't matter. It could be levels because I'm only using it for a blend mode. So I'm clicking on this button right here for the curves adjustment layer. I'm going to change the blend mode to either soft light or overlay. Basically what this is going to do is give me contrast. Soft light will be a lower contrast. Overlay will be higher. I think I want the higher contrast. Now I know that looks ugly, right? But watch, I'll fix that by putting a black mask on there, okay? Then we're going to come up here to my channels and click on the foreground because I want to protect my sky. All I'm going to do is output this to a black mask painting with a white brush through a selection, but I don't really have a selection. Or yes, I do. I have the actual foreground as a selection, okay? So it's protecting my sky. So with... 20% opacity of paint, I can just paint contrast. You see that right over the top of this mountain. So that's one pass. I have not lifted my brush. And if I get into the sky, it doesn't matter because the foreground mask is protecting me. Here is the before and here's the after. I'm going to go to 10%. I'm going to type my one key and go over that one more time just to build that contrast up a little bit more. Okay, so let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. So that really helps up there. And if it's too strong, you always have these opacity adjustments that you can pull back and cut back on that. But I'm going to leave it strong, at least for the video, so you can really see it here. Now, I'm noticing a little problem here. You see where I overpainted right here? I can fix that. Just go to a black brush and I'm at 20% opacity. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller, nice soft edge, and I can just paint over that couple times and blend that off of there okay so no big deal you got a nice soft edge brush so let's take a look here is the before and here's the after but you see how nicely that's built up that contrast in there and i think that looks really good i'm in the overlay blend mode as i said but if you click soft light you can see the difference here's soft light see it's just slightly less contrast versus overlay and i think the overlay is the one that gets it right now what do we do next? I'm glad you asked that question. The light areas up here on this mountain, right in this area here, I think are too light, so I want to darken that. So I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer in a multiply blend mode. 
Now, I have a selection right now. You can see by the selection indicator. I don't want that because it'll put that selection and turn it into a mask if I click this button right here. And I don't want that. So let's deselect it. I'm going to click this button on the combo panel to deselect our selection. And now we're going to get a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to put it in the multiply blend mode. And when I do that, you'll see the entire image gets really dark. And that looks really ugly, right? We don't want that. Let's hide that by clicking on this black mask icon. Puts a black mask on that layer. And now let's go up here to my channels and grab the foreground. So click on foreground. We're going to need the mask calculator. So click on the mask calculator. We're going to do an intersection. So click on this X to get an intersection. X out of here. Now to select this area, I think a zone mask will work. So click on the zone mask button. And now we're going to sample some of the light area here, right here. So just give that a click and click OK. And now you can see we selected those uh, light areas. The lighter parts here will be the light areas. We're going to lighten that up some. So I'm going to drag this slider to the right just to really lighten those guys up. And I can even tighten that selection up a little bit by taking this adjustment and dragging it to the left just a very little bit just to tighten that up. And now we need to click equals to make that calculation. And the reason I use that foreground, because when I paint over in this area, if I paint out into the sky, it will get affected. But now it won't because the mask is protecting it. And now let's just output this to a black mask, painting with a white brush through a selection. So click on this button. And now with 20% opacity and with a nice soft edge brush, we can just go ahead and paint over these areas with 20% to darken them up. And I might get this area one more time in here. Maybe over in here, up in here, maybe one more time, and right over here. And I might just get this one more time right there. Now let's take a look. Here is the before, and here's the after. If you ever want to see what your mask looks like, make sure you have the layer active and click the double arrow button here, and you can see that's what you painted right there. So click it again, and you're back to your image. And again, here's the before, and here is the after, and that really helps that out. Okay, troubleshooting again. I'm looking at this sky. Now, yellow and blue go really well together. So what I want to do is bring out more saturation up here in the blue cyan color in the sky. So what I'll do is, first off, I have a selection here. So let's get rid of this selection because I'm going to click on the hue saturation adjustment layer. And I don't want that selection to turn into a mask. So let's deselect that. Let's click on the hue saturation adjustment layer button right here. That gives us a hue saturation adjustment layer. And now this button right here, if you click it, it lets you add a channel to that layer. And I want the sky. I only want to affect the sky here. So I'm going to click on sky and it puts that sky mask on there. Now I'm going to take this targeted adjustment tool, click on it and come over to the sky up here click and drag this to the right to maybe somewhere right about here maybe a little bit more uh, maybe right that's nah, too much maybe right there and you'll notice it's targeted cyan so here's the before and here's the after but you see how nice that goes with the yellow and blue together that's really pretty now we've really come a long way in this edit. So now it's time to start playing around with some action. So I'm going to go to my TK actions. Now I have my CX panel here and I like to keep my actions open. So I'm going to click on this TK button. Whenever I launch an action, that'll stay open. And I want to try a soft pop action. So let's click on soft pop. And I like it. I think it's too strong. I'm going to take this fill and I'm going to drag it to the left. And I think right here at 10% looks really good. It's still a little strong. So I'm going to take the opacity and pull it back. And I think I'm going to go to like right here, which is 80%. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, I love what it's doing in the foreground, but I don't like what's happening in the sky. So here's what I can do. Click that button that I just used on the previous layer, this button right here, and we could add a channel to that layer. So I'm going to click on foreground and it puts a foreground mask on there. So now check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. It only adds the soft pop to the foreground. And notice something after I ran the action, this action panel stayed open. So to keep that open, let me X out of here. Here's what you need to do. Click on the TK button and make sure you have closed TK unchecked. If you don't have that unchecked it will close itself automatically so let me click the x here 
see when I open it here, if I run another action, that stays open. And I like that because I like to have my TK actions readily available for me at any time I want to use them. And if you have a lot of real estate on your computer, this is a nice way to set up your TK plugin for Photoshop. Now for my next step, I would like to lighten up this entire foreground a little bit. So I told you this is a non-destructive workflow. So we can come down here to this balance and contrast layer. It's a good idea to name the layers and I always do that, but in a video, I don't have time to do it. So I'm gonna click right here. And if we click on the color grading tool, which is what I use, and if I click on midtones, you can see that's where my midtones are set. I'm gonna go ahead and lighten up those midtones even more. You see that? I'm gonna lighten those guys up to maybe right about there. I'm gonna to go to my shadows, so click on the shadow block, and I'm gonna darken up those shadows a little bit more, add a little bit of extra contrast in there, okay? Plus, I think I'll slightly cool down the shadows by dragging this block right here, just, just to cool them down, just a slight amount. And now let's click on the top soft pop layer to make it active, and we'll start building from here. And by the way, we're almost done with this edit. Next up, I wanna do a little bit of freehand burning, just in some of the shadow areas to bring out some contour in these trees here. And so what we'll do is click on the left side of this uh, burn tool in the combo panel right here. And that gives us that 50% gray layer in a soft light blend mode. And I want to use an opacity of just 10%. This is freehand, no masks involved here. And all I want to do is start painting some of these shadow areas on some of these trees. I'm going to go fast here. I'm not going to really get them all, but you see the idea here. Just look for little shadow areas and build up a lit little bit of you know contouring in there darken them up and that plays the lights off the darks which is nice and you can make your brush smaller if you need to to get into these little smaller areas in here and even on some like these shadow areas down in here we can get and and like i said i'm not going to do the whole thing here but you get the idea you just start darkening these up and just to see what i've done so far just look in this area here is the before and here is the after, but you see how that builds some nice contouring and it plays the lights off against the shadows, which is really nice. I paused the video and painted in some more of those shadow areas to contour those a little bit more. So here's the before and here's the after. So you can see how well that is doing to really shape out those aspens in there. The next thing I want to do is highlight some of the lighter areas in here, kind of a dodging, but I'm going to do it with paint contrast. So let's click on paint contrast. The color picker comes up. I'm gonna sample some of the lighter color in here, like right here, and really drag this up and get the lightest, most saturated color, which is right here in the corner and click OK. And now with like 30% opacity, right now I'm at 10, I'm gonna type my three key and just start painting some beautiful lighted areas in here, okay? And we can even vary the color. So if you come here and click on this green brush, the color picker comes up. Let me uh, even go lighter like that. See, it's a lighter yellow now, and then I can come in here and just paint some of that contrast in there. And just, just look for different areas that you really wanna lighten up. See, like right up in here. And again, I'm not gonna take all the time in the world to do this, I'm just gonna start it and show you how. I'll do a little bit more and then get back to you. But let's leave it there for now. I'll finish it up and then I'll show you. Okay, I took a little break, finished that off. Now this is the before the paint contrast. Now check it out. Look at the aspens down there. Here is the after. So again, the before and after, but you see how beautiful that paint contrast works. I'm really happy with that result. Two more finishing touches and we will be done. I wanna add a vignette to this. I'll click on the vignette action to add a simple vignette. And I'm gonna take the Gaussian blur just the way it is. I usually do click OK. I'm just gonna lower the opacity to like 25% right there. Here's the before and here's the after. Now I don't want it up in the sky. So to do that, I'm gonna put this layer in a group. So click the right side of this group icon right here, puts it in a group with a white mask, just like so. Click this button right here again. I love this button because we can choose a channel. We can uh, choose foreground only, so click on foreground, and now it's only applying the vignette to the foreground. Here's the before and here is the after, and it keeps it out of the sky. 
Now, one last finishing touch, and I showed you this last week. This is thanks to Tony Kuiper who told me to try this. And I think I'm going to finish all of my edits with this uh, action. And that's the color loom action. So click on that. And basically what it is, it's a black and white adjustment layer. As you can see right here, here it is here in the luminosity blend mode. And this lets you add some color contrast. And we do that by adjusting the luminance values of the different colors. We can make them lighter or darker. And then you can even also decrease contrast between colors if you keep those luminance values relatively close to each other. That'll decrease the contrast of colors. If you lighten a color, say for instance yellow, if we lighten up the yellows a little bit and darken up the blues, now we're creating color contrast between yellow and blue. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to start with blues. I'm going to take my blues and darken up my blues like to maybe right about there. Let me play with the cyans. Let me darken up the cyans a little bit. Let me go to yellows and lighten up those yellows. Not too much, but just a little wee bit. Maybe right about there. And let's play with the reds. Let's see what we have here in reds. Okay, maybe I'll bring those back just a little bit like that. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. But look at the big difference I got in there. But we've increased that color contrast and I think that looks really cool. And you can also take the overall opacity of this layer and take it off and just build in as much of that contrast in there as you want. And I may back that off a little bit to maybe around 88%. Now here is the before and here is the after and I like it. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, this full edit tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon every time I upload a new tutorial, then you'll get a notification. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.